Hello and uh, welcome back to Sansa Mad videos. And now we will do some sequence of videos that will be part of the inflammation chapter. And uh, one of the basic important ones of the vascular response will be hemostasis. So let's talk about what is hemostasis. Hemostasis is the process in which you will stop bleeding. So you can assume the opposite of this would be bleeding, which is called hemorrhage. All right, so uh, we'll make three videos about this and one pathophysiological uh, video about this. The three videos w uh, will be amongst others about normal process, injury state, and uh, fibrinolysis together with the calicarinian system. And the fourth one will be about the pathophysiological and pathological aspects. So let's start. So what is the coagulation? Coagulation essentially is to convert your fibrinogen that will be found in your blood produced by the liver into fibrin but there are many steps in between them and those are the ones we're going to talk about so normally your blood is a in a liquid form and uh, what you're supposed to do continuously without even knowing about it what your blood, uh, body does is to maintain its liquid state if there is an injury to a vessel or to a tissue su uh, supplied by a vessel, uh, vessel your body will do whatever it can to prevent a solidification and this will be through these processes so let's talk about the normal state in the beginning uh, normally right now in your endothelium there is constant production of nitric oxide the one uh, you see right here nitric oxide it's a vasodilatory substance that is constantly produced Another uh, constantly produced uh, substance is prostacycline, which has a mortal enemy called thromboxin A2. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, the balance between them, but just remember, if anyone ever asks you about prostacycline, what's the function of it, or the thromboxin, it's enough if you know one of them, and you automatically know that the, uh, the other one is just pure opposite. Uh, all right, so these continue, uh, both of them have both uh, nitric oxide and prostacycline have vasodilatory effect, but prostacycline also has a platelet, it, it inhibits platelet aggregation process. So let's talk about the other uh, factors that are produced by the liver, which maintains, uh, that causes coagulation and the ones that inhibit them. Let's talk about the first one. In your endothelium, there's p continuous production of heparin sulfate. On this heparin sulfate, you will find a protein called antithrombin 3, which you see right here. Antithrombin 3, the function of it is to continuously cleave the factors produced by the liver. The factors include factor 2, which is thrombin, factor 7, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And in this picture, you don't see number 12, so let's just add it as well. Factor 12 is also called the Hagman factor. It's the one that you should know the both names on because you will see how important it is. It's essentially the activator. So, and you probably heard about a drug called heparin, and you always heard that it's an anticoagulant, anticoagulant, anticoagulant. But what does it do? Actually, it will enhance the activity of antithrombin 3 to continue cleaving these factors. The other factors that are still uh, we haven't spoken about are factor 5 and 8 and thrombin. And uh, thrombin is continuously degenerated by a surface protein on the endothelium called APC, activated protein C. It needs a cofactor, which we will now include in this picture, called protein S. It's a cofactor that will enhance the activity of it and the function of Protein C is to cleave factor 5 and 8. And it will get enhanced by action of thrombomodulin, the one you see right here. That requires a cofactor of 
thrombin. And then <coughs> we also have platelets that plays a, a very essential part of coagulation process. Uh, you will hear about adhesion, aggregation and secretion. But within the platelets, you have different types of granules, which are essentially vesicles. You will have alpha granules, as you see right here, and dense granules. Alpha and dense granules contain different substances. For instance, dense granules contain uh, serotonin, histamine, ADP, and calcium while uh, the alpha granules contains other substances such as platelet factor 4 and etc you will find the list in the slide and uh, there will be later on we'll talk about the fibrinolysis but for now it's enough about to know now you know what you can find in the normal state of the coagulation process let's continue with the second video soon thank you